Hello, welcome back to Educator.com and our series on AP Computer Science. The topic of today's lesson is classes and objects. Java is an object-oriented programming language and therefore classes and objects are fundamental to proper use of Java and making full use of all the language features and capabilities. You can also expect to see a substantial number of questions about classes and objects and the material in today's lesson on your AP computer science exam, both in the multiple choice questions as well as in the free response questions. So the information in today's lesson is particularly important that you understand it and be able to apply it. In this lesson, we'll first talk about classes and objects overall, and then we'll dive into various aspects of classes and objects. We'll talk about constructors, which is how you create a new object. We'll talk about methods, which are sometimes known as functions in other programming languages. We'll look at data fields that belong to classes and objects. We'll look at the return type of a method. We'll talk about access control, that is, how you can control who has access to the various pieces of your classes. Accessors and modifiers are specific types of methods. We'll talk about static and instance as they relate to both methods and data fields. We will look at passing data to methods and then getting data back from methods in return. And finally, we'll talk about something known as overloaded methods. So a lot of material in this lesson, but it's all very important to your understanding of Java and success on the AP exam. So let's get started. A Java program consists of classes. That's the fundamental structure of a Java program being a, a object-oriented programming language. And the term class refers to a class of objects. A class definition includes three pieces, constructors, methods, and data fields. And we'll look at each of those in detail later in this lesson. An object that belongs to a class is called an instance of that class. And creating an object of a class is called instantiation. That is, creating an instance of a class. The new keyword, which we've seen in previous lessons but not really talked about in any detail, is how you instantiate an object of the specified class. So if I have a class called P, if I have a class called person, and I declare a variable P as a, a variable of type person, then I use the new keyword and the name of the class with parentheses, the new keyword actually does the work of creating an object of type person. And then the assignment operator equals assigns that newly created object of type person to the variable p. So I can then use p as an object in my program from that point forward in the program. A constructor describes how to create an object of a particular class and also it may initialize the object's instance variables. A constructor has the same name as the class. As we saw on the previous slide, a class called person would have a constructor called person. That is, by definition, the constructor ma must match the name of the class. A class may, however, have multiple constructors. Each constructor takes, uh, has the same name as the class, but must take a different set of parameters. The parameters are what go in the, inside the parentheses when you call that constructor. And the parameters are known as a signature. We'll talk more about signatures later in this lesson. A constructor that takes no parameters, that just you just call it with the name of the constructor, open parenthesis and close parenthesis with nothing in between, is called a no args constructor, args being short for arguments. It takes no arguments or no parameters. A constructor also has no return type. 
not even void. We'll talk about return types later in this lesson also, but it's important to remember that the constructor does not have any return type. It creates an object, so you can, you can think of it as a constructor returns the entire object rather than a particular return type. When the new operator is called to create a new object, it's the constructor that actually does the work of creating the object, passing it back to you and giving you a reference to that newly created object. So here's an example of a class that has two constructors. We have a class called cartoon character. And here is one constructor, and this is a no args constructor because there's nothing in the parentheses. And all it does is it sets the name variable to an empty string, and it sets another variable called a hobby also to an empty string. There's a second constructor here also named cartoon character because the constructor must match the name of the class, but this one has a different signature. If I want to have more than one constructor, they must each have a different signature. This one takes two strings. It takes a string n and a string h, and then what it does is sets the name data field to whatever is passed in as the string n, and it sets the hobby field to whatever is passed in as the string h. And whichever constructor I choose to use depends on what I want to do. If I want to just create an object and have it have the default settings of empty strings for its variables, then I can simply use the no args constructor here. If I want to specify an initial value of name and hobby, then I would use the constructor that takes parameters for both name and hobby and sets those data variables during the construction process. A method is a function that's defined within a class. And a method is defined as follows. You have an, an access level, which is either public or private, and we'll talk about that later in the lesson today. The return type is next. In this case, this method returns a string. And then the name of the method followed by any parameters that it takes in parentheses. So this method is called getName. It takes no parameters. And what it does is it simply returns the variable name, which belongs to the class. And it returns that as a string. Here's another method also defined as public. This has a return type of void, which means it does not return anything. It's called setName, and it takes a string as a parameter, and it refers to that string with the variable n. And what it does is it sets the data member name equal to whatever is passed in as the string n. I have some notes out here that this getName method is known as an accessor, and the setName is known as a, either a modifier or a mutator. And we'll talk about those designators also later in this lesson.